Anderson Cooper, AC360, CNN Weeknights, 10 Eastern. Nearly 300 people have been killed in the last 14 days, according to Human Rights Watch. Most of them not videotaped, their deaths not recorded. And according to the Wall Street Journal, nearly 1,300 people have been arrested. They're citing figures from the Egyptian Organization for Human Rights. Some of those 1,300 people have been released, but others still held, and we don't know where, and we don't know what's being done to them. According to several New York Times personnel who were held by the secret police a few days ago, they could hear captured Egyptians being beaten, tortured, crying out in pain. That is the truth of the Mubarak regime. They have blood on their hands, and the question tonight, are they really going to change for themselves? You're going to hear from our reporters on the ground in a moment, also in Washington, and we'll talk to Mohamed al a leading opposition figure. But we begin, as always, tonight, keeping them honest. And tonight we begin by focusing on the lies the Egyptian government continues to tell. Now, I know lies is a strong word. It's one we rarely use. We talk about uh, different facts. But we can't think of another word right now to describe what the Egyptian government has been saying because what they've been saying is the direct opposite of what they have been doing. The lies go back years, decades, of course, but we want to just focus on some of the ones we've heard in the last few days. The new vice president of Egypt, this man, Omar Suleiman, has for years been Mubarak's closest henchman, running his intelligence service. Now, he says his government has accepted many of the protesters' complaints. He says they're reaching out to opposition leaders. But while he was saying that, literally while his lips were moving and saying those things on Egyptian television and on ABC News, his secret police were still arresting opposition figures. Thugs burst into the offices of human rights organizations, trashing the places, arresting a number of human rights monitors. And there has been absolutely no transparency about what the Egyptian government is doing right now, other than a few awkward photo ops on Egyptian government-controlled television. The Egyptian government has denied any involvement in these kind of attacks by mobs on peaceful demonstrators and reporters. They say they have no idea how these things happen. But the Egyptian military stood there and let it happen. I saw that with my own eyes. We all saw that. And when they realized the protesters could not be beaten back by mobs and reporters would continue working, the military suddenly stepped in. And with a few rolls of concertina wire and a few shots in the air, they suddenly were able to keep the mobs at bay. The Egyptian government says the military didn't want to choose sides, but the truth is they did choose sides. They searched peaceful demonstrators entering Liberation Square for days, but made no efforts to search or calm angry pro-Mubarak mobs as they descended on Liberation Square. Even while the government was insisting that journalists were welcome to report freely in Egypt, at the end of last week, we now learned that from the International Committee to Protect Journalists, 26 journalists have been detained since the end of last week, since Friday, 71 since the protests began, and those are just the ones they could count. So how can a regime that's operated under emergency powers for 30 years be expected to suddenly transition to democracy and act with transparency? Those emergency powers allow the Egyptian government to arrest anyone they want at any time. Take a look what happened when Candy Crowley pressed Egypt's prime minister about this yesterday on CNN. Mr. Prime Minister, our reporters on the scene in Cairo tell us that while you negotiate about a democratic process, there are still arrests of local and international human rights activists as well as journalists. Why are you arresting them? No, no, I didn't understand you. We are, I didn't understand you, Frank. We yeah. are told that you are arresting human rights activists and journalists. Why? No, I don't hear well. I don't hear well now. Suddenly sound problems developed. He couldn't hear. A few moments later, Candy tried again. Let me ask you about arrests by the military police. Why are they arresting about, uh, arrests? About, about what? About the detention of human rights activists. Why are you detaining them? Oh, <laughs> Uh, frankly speaking, if there is some problems, it's not intended at all, my dear. It's not intended at all, my dear. That was his answer, finally. This is a police state. Some estimates say there are more than 1.5 million people employed in the feared interior ministry, secret police, thugs, informers. The man who oversaw the intelligence services is now the vice president of Egypt. It's not intended at all. Thursday, while the Egyptian government was talking about reaching out to opposition figures, nine young dissidents had a meeting with opposition leader Mohamed el-Baradei. That evening, all nine were rounded up and detained.